Hello, Florissant fans. Here showing off my latest offerings. Uh, super exciting times we've got coming up. Uh, these are the first shortwave LED lights that you'll be able to purchase if you're in the US. Um, and in order to do that, I had to... Uh, they're not going to have, rather, a uh, glass filter or any glass element at all. So that means that, you know, you'll be able to stick your finger in here, but it also means that, you know, dust, dirt, debris will be able to get in, so take necessary precautions. Now, as for our first light we got here, it's based off of the Convoy S2, and uh, I'm going to be calling it the AD, uh, and this line is meant to be, you know, the, uh, the, the entry-level light. This might be your first light, or, you know, you might not be sure about shortwave LEDs yet, uh, but for those of you that aren't familiar, uses a single 18650, and pretty easy. You unscrew it, put in your battery, and um, yeah, I've got custom circuitry in there. And as you can see on the business end, it's got one LED, one shortwave LED, and that's going to be outputting 80 milliwatts, uh, which is roughly equivalent to your 9-watt bulbs. And this is going to cost uh, $90 shipped worldwide. So. Great Christmas present, if you'd like. Now, for the next light, I am super proud of this one. Uh, it has rightfully earned its name as part of my OD line. Uh, just a quick aside, this was the original Long Wave OD. It's got three of these LGN Attack LEDs, so six watts radiant, and still one of the most powerful lights you'll see five years later. Now, this light, uh, it's going to be, as you can see, a triple, so three LEDs, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a slightly more powerful version of the ones in the AD. It's going to be 300 milliwatts, and um, this one's going to be $250 shipped uh, worldwide again. And uh, this light, it's, uh, it's a bit of a hot rod, uh, so this... It's going to get hot pretty quickly, you know, within a few minutes, if you're indoors, uh, this is going to, this head is going to get pretty hot, but um, don't worry about that, because uh, I've got circuitry inside that is, uh, that does regulate the temperature, so once it hits a uh, threshold, which is 55 degrees Celsius, it'll start backing the current down, and uh, yeah, that way you won't have to worry about damaging these precious LEDs. Uh, 55 is well within operating temperature. Now, as for battery types, uh, this uses my favorite cell. These are called 21700s, but uh, this is an upgrade pick, so I'm not going to be forcing you know my favorite battery type on you. If you'd like to use your 18650s, uh, each of these lights will come with an adapter so that you're able to use any of your old cells, or like I said, if you're upgrading, yeah, I mean, natural upgrade. Now. As for the reasons that I'm super proud of this light, we've got to bring in another light. This was one of the prototypes that I had originally created. It's using an LED uh, from a company called Ingfeng Optoelectronics, and they claim that it is 500 milliwatts, um, but, you know, in actual testing, uh, this beats it. You know, slight margin, but still beats it. And also, it overcomes this LED's biggest weakness, which, let's take a look. So we're here on Ingfeng's website, and um, this was the original LED that I was going to use, and if we take a look, 250 to 260 nanometers, checks out, uh, 100 to 120 milliwatts. Uh, you'll figure out later in the video when I compare them, but Personally, I would have these numbers, but I'll let you uh, make your own decision on that. Uh, the number we're concerned about is this 700 number, and that corresponds to how much current is required to drive this LED. Um, but another important consideration is how long do these LEDs last, because that's been a big problem. And um, yeah, let's take a look. So if we take a look at our graphs, uh, this is the one that's going to be most concerning for us. Um, 
So at the one hour mark, it loses over 10% of its original brightness. Uh, at the 10 hour mark, it loses close to 25%. And personally, these numbers were unacceptable to me. You know, one hour losing 10%, over 10% of your LED's brightness, uh, that's one viewing session, one show, one collecting trip. And the real kicker was, take a look at this. So this is the graph at 350 milliamps. So if we'll remember, it's actually rated at 700 milliamps, so double that. So potentially, you're going to see double this rate of wear. And um, yeah, that's what made me so happy when I found these new LEDs. So if we take a look, uh, big, big improvements. So at around the 400 hour mark is when you'll lose 10% and um, it doesn't even go to 25%. At the 1000 hour mark, you're barely going to lose 20%. So huge, huge improvement that I'm super happy with. And yeah, I'm glad that uh, I found these LEDs. So now that we've seen uh, the two lights, let's introduce the specimens that I'm going to be comparing them to. First, uh, some night, some uh, daylight shots, so you can see, you know, what, roughly what it would be like uh, at a show. Oh, before I forget, let's see, just for reference, so you guys can see, light meter, <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. So not super, not super bright. Uh, it's only about 300 lux. Uh, but yeah, you know, I've got like a nice soft light going on here, but you still be able to see them if you stick your light closer at a show. But let's take a look. Let me see if you can see this. Yeah, these are, this is a beautiful, beautiful Douglas Geode from Utah, and I love the fluorescent phantoms in this. And by the way, I'm going to be showing off a wide variety of brightnesses. That's what these examples are for. See them in the daytime first. This is your classic, uh, I want to say this is a calcite willamite. Yep, it is from Sterling Hill. And accompanying that, you know, this is the brighter spectrum. Accompanying that is a hardy stite, clinohydrite, and rolamite. Uh, you know, this is one of the dimmer Franklin specimens, but that's still, <laughs> you know, on the scale of things, still like medium brightness overall. Uh, over here we've got a beautiful, beautiful shoe-like crystal from Inner Mongolia. And oh man, look at those terminations. Gorgeous crystal. Uh, representing more of the medium brightness, we've got this zircon from Malawi. And lastly, representing the dimmer uh, specimens, we've got a feldspar? Yep, feldspar from Malawi. And um, this one I think is going to be stretching it, to be honest. Uh, so it's fluorescing red, and you can see kind of a purple red, but uh, I think you'd probably miss this if you were at a show. So maybe not the best as is or dimly lit. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at what they look like at night. All right, and we are back with the shortwave AD. Uh, I've calibrated the camera to roughly match what my eye sees, and um, right now we are about two feet away from the specimens, which is about uh, 60 centimeters. So yeah, perfectly usable at night. And now the star of the show, the shortwave OD Mini. And yeah, this thing definitely for collecting at night, uh, probably even on a full moon. You know, waist height collecting at a full moon. Worst case scenario for us for us and mineral collectors. And same conditions, calibrated to my eye, about two feet away, 60 centimeters. Now for a bit of an angle change. We've got the uh, OD Mini on the left and the Inghuang on the right. 
quick note before we do comparison. Uh, so obviously these two lights have different shape reflectors, but I thought I'd make it as fair as possible by limiting the amount of space they have. So as you can see, these are both very similar lights, and uh, the amount of space they have for a reflector is about the same. So let's start off by comparing. Uh, it's pretty close. If I had to give the edge, I'd probably say the OD Mini is a little bit brighter. But, like, if we take a look at just how much visible light the uh, Yingfeng is putting out, it's a lot more, a lot more purple light coming out of this, for sure. Let's take a look at the uh, Feldspar. Oh yeah, a lot more visible light. <laughs> you can see all of the uh, iron staining on there <laughs> pretty clearly. Alright, let's look at the sheen light. Mm, tough call, and I mean... Considering the uh, Yingfeng is claiming 500 milliwatts, it really shouldn't be this close. Um, and for the Yingfeng, I've done everything I can to make sure that this is as new as possible. The light has only been on for maybe a total of like 6 or 7 minutes while I'm recording all this. So it should still be like well within, you know, well under that uh, 10 plus percent mark that it's losing. But uh... Hmm? Maybe... I can't tell if there's more visible light on that hardy snipe, but it looks like I'm seeing more colors. I can't tell. Uh, and it's even hard to tell on the camera, but... Yeah, I'd say, like, I'd probably give the edge to the OD Mini. Just based on this zircon piece, it looks a lot brighter. So hopefully I've given you guys enough information on which light you want, whether that's the AD or the OD Mini here. Uh, I'll be honest, I definitely didn't make enough. Uh, I underestimated the response that I would get. Um, so for batch one, probably not too many of you guys are going to get, but um, I'm hoping to have uh, batch two completed by the beginning of December. Right now I'm still waiting on parts, uh, but it's going to be 50 of these and uh, 10 of these. So, as for uh, where you can get them, I'm going to be posting them on my website, raymond-woo.com, as well as on uh, the Facebook Fluorescent Minerals groups. So, uh, go take a look.